Lord tells us to at the end of of this session tonight. And uh, so uh, thank you again for, for being with us. And I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. And Sherry said the title of the message tonight is Faith and Power for Prosperity. You know, in October of 1981, the Lord Jesus Christ spoke to me and he said, Freddie, I want you to teach my people how to be rich. So I love to talk about prosperity and abundance and uh, the riches, true riches of God. And that's what we'll be covering today. Uh, as we talked about last week, uh, we need to connect faith and power. Uh, and last week was about faith and power for healing tonight. It's faith and power and connecting those for prosperity. Uh, it's real important that we know how to operate in the area of prosperity because, uh, first of all, I want you to know that in God's redemptive plan, oh, hallelujah, which is Jesus Christ, of course, but in his <clears throat> redemptive plan uh, was prosperity. And Jesus became poor that we might be rich. I'll ask Sherry to read this verse, if she would, please. It says, 2 Corinthians 8, 9, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you through his poverty might become rich. Okay, so there it is. It was in the redemptive plan all along. He became poor that we might be rich. And we're really talking about true riches tonight, and that's uh, riches of that come from the Lord. I mean. And so we need to recognize that and how to maneuver in this kingdom, in his kingdom, uh, because that's where they are. Now, I also uh, wanted us to think about that God's will is for his people to prosper. Amen. He wants you to prosper. And this is one Hallelujah. of our favorite uh, verses. This is This is Amy John Elizabeth's T. favorite verse. Third Amen. John 2. Third John 2. Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. Oh, hallelujah. So yes, he wants amen. you to prosper right there above everything else. And this is the, this is the breath of the Holy Spirit speaking this. He's through, speaking it through uh, John uh, and John's writing it to guys, but mm -hmm. it, it's he's no respecter of persons. God is no respecter amen. of person. And he this is above everything else. He wants you to prosper and be in health. So it is God's God's will. And, and we need to recognize that. And your faith, see, is going to be built on knowledge of what his will is. And, uh, yes, you know, right. Sherry and I pray for you every every Amen. day. Amen. We, we pray for your uh, kingdom mindset. We pray that your mind be renewed, yes, that you right. know uh, his will. And here's a, a verse I want to... Uh, Sherry, to read you from Colossians 1, verses 9 and 10. And this is the way Paul prayed uh, for those faithful believers in Colossian, uh, Colossae. And it's the same way we pray for you. And I want you to hear this, this prayer. Colossians 1, 9 through 10. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. Oh, it's about the knowledge of God. There's, there's prayer here. here here's a, uh, an example of prayer. And this is what we're praying for you. You can pray it for yourself. Yes. Or that we need the knowledge of God. And that's what our faith is based on. It's based on knowledge. You, you don't have faith based on ignorance. Faith right. is based on knowledge. And then it talks about well, this knowledge of God and God's will. The knowledge of God's will, where does it come from? It comes from the wisdom and understanding of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So this message is about the Holy Spirit operating in our lives, bringing God's prosperity. And he said, uh, it wants us to walk worthy, a life of, uh, that's worthy uh, to the Lord. And pleasing to the Lord. Now, that Amen. phrase, Amen. pleasing Amen. to the Lord, is really important. We're going to follow up mm -hmm. with some other verses about it. But live a life that's pleasing to God, that you be fruitful. Well, 
let's think about the fruit of the Spirit. It's the nature of God. So you be like God. Really, what this is saying, you we're praying that you will be like God. You'll have the very nature of God. You'll have the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, and peace. And these are everlasting. You know, Jesus said he wanted us to bring forth fruit that would remain. Mm -hmm. That's everlasting. And the fruit that remains are faith, hope, Amen. and charity Amen. or love. Faith, hope, and love. Hallelujah. So this, this is the nature of God. He wants us to bring forth the nature of God. It's God's will for us to live a life worthy of him and pleasing to him. Amen. That phrase, pleasing. See, we know from mm -hmm. Hebrews 11, 6 that that uh, without faith, we cannot please That's him. Impossible. Let's read that verse here. Without faith, it is impossible. Impossible. To please him. So it's by faith then. It's Hallelujah. by faith. And then uh, Romans 14, 23 says, uh, if it's not faith, mm -hmm. uh-oh, if it's not, not a faith, faith, it's sin. It's sin. <laughs> Read oh. it. Just make sure we get the right Romans word. 14, 23. Whatever is not from faith is sin. Okay, so we're going to live a life worthy. It's going of the Lord. It's going to be uh, pleasing to Him. It's going to be by faith. And, and we see from Joshua one eight. These are real uh, fundamental verses. I'm going over yeah. here to begin with building a foundation. Building a foundation for prosperity. <clears throat> and uh, we see from Joshua one eight. This is a a, a very familiar. Uh, verse, I'm, I'm sure to all of you, but there are three basic duties of faith. If you want to live high faith, uh, then these are the three things you need to do. And that is to uh, speak the word of God, think on the word of God, and act on the word of God. You just do those three things. If you're not doing those things, it says it's sin, because whatever is not of faith is it's sin. sin. See, if we're thinking about other things, we're thinking about the world. Oh, and yeah, you, you yeah. think about the chaos that's in the world. Yeah. Uh, but thinking about that is not thinking on the word of God uh, because the world doesn't know what God has in store for those that love him Amen. and are called according to his purpose. He's going to work all things out uh, for all of us. He's going to work things out. And so don't get caught up. Uh, media may say, oh, the, the economy is falling apart and the uh, other nations are taking over our economy and don't get concerned about that. Don't get caught up in that. Yeah, I believe the word is entangled. It says that in, in I believe it's in Second Timothy, that a good soldier does not entangle themselves with the affairs of this life. Oh, hallelujah. So if you are on the battlefield and you're fighting for something and you've got your faith out there, you don't want to get entangled with thinking about things that are not of the Lord. See, once you're born again, uh, you're enlisted into an army. Amen. And there's a conflict going on. And, and it's between God's kingdom and the world and the flesh and all of, and the devil and, and his uh, uh, kingdom. It's going to, you are a soldier. We've got Amen. to recognize and we're not to be entangled That's with, right. with those things. Now, if we do these three duties, this is Joshua 1 8. Let's see what happens. Duties of faith. This is for a person that wants to operate on this earth with high faith, a high level of faith. Let's go over this, Joshua 1 8. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will succeed in everything that you do. Ooh, hallelujah. It's going to result in something. Hallelujah. See, if you do these three things, these three duties of faith, if you are always thinking about the Word of God, we're always speaking. You don't let yeah. anything come out Amen. of your mouth that's not the Word of God. That's not what the Spirit is telling you to say. Hallelujah. And then you're acting according to the word of God. You're being led by the spirit of God. And then you're going to make your way prosperous. And then you're going to have good success. Now, did you notice here that it didn't say God was going to make you prosperous? Oh, let's just think about that for a moment. Mm -hmm. God's 
See, I, when he said to me in October of 1981, he said, Freddie, I want you to teach my people how to be rich. Uh, well, there's several things about that because I thought uh, money was just going to come out of the air and just fall. Woo! Wow, hallelujah. I was, I was excited. I was looking forward to it. But see what, uh, when he calls you by name, mm -hmm. he called me by name. He called me Freddie. Uh, and, and that's kind of an interesting story in itself because of, my name is Freddie, but when I became a professional, I just shortened it to Fred. And uh, evidently, Jesus didn't get the memo because he, he called me Fred. <laughs> and uh, so over 40 years, you know, out to the world, I was Fred. Uh, and uh, so he called me Freddie. But when he calls you by name, see, he's calling forth your destiny. Well, who is Freddie? Well, Freddie is the peaceful ruler. That's who I am. That's that's my name. He he recognized that. He called me by that. He he was calling my destiny. Woo! Hallelujah! <laughs> oh, hallelujah! To come forth, a peaceful ruler and Amen. teach Amen. his people how to be rich. And that's hallelujah. what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing uh, tonight. And. Uh, you do it by faith. Walk by faith, not by sight. Mm -hmm. See, your sight is looking at what's going on in the world. Oh, the new, did you hear what the news media said? Oh, the news said our economy is crashing and our uh, mm -hmm. inflation is out of control. And the news, news, news. But we're not supposed to be fo focusing on the news. We're supposed to be focusing on the Word of God, all of our thoughts about the Word of God. We're going to be speaking the Word of God. Don't let anything come out of your mouth that's not uh, consistent Lord. with the Word of God and, and being led by the Holy Spirit and then acting on uh, what the Word of God says. And then you will, you will, you will make yourself prosper. Woo, A lot hallelujah. of people are, are just sitting around wondering, well, why, why am I not prospering? Why? Why do I not have enough money to uh, mm. get to the end of the month? Well, you've got to get up, get up and go out and do something. Hallelujah. Act. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, so we're talking about faith then. You've got to do it by the word of God, be led by the spirit of God, and you will make yourself prosperous. Now, I want to change. I've talked about faith. Now, I want to connect and talk about the power to create wealth, Amen. the power to create prosperity Hallelujah. and abundance. Hallelujah. It's all the same thing. And uh, we're going to see it here in Deuteronomy 8.18. Uh, who is it that makes you, uh, gives you the power to get wealth? Well, we're going to see in Deuteronomy 8.18. Sherry, would you read that? But you are to remember that it's the Lord your God, for it is he who is giving you the power to create wealth oh hallelujah in order to confirm his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day oh did you see hallelujah. something here? it didn't say god's giving you well and this mm. verse didn't say that no and the verse in joshua didn't say he's giving you prosperity he, he's he's showing you a way to prosper here he's giving you a way to, to create. Uh, create wealth He's not giving you wealth. He's showing you a way to create it. And that's what oh, this hallelujah. message is about tonight. With faith, faith and power, power will create wealth, Amen. prosperity, and abundance. Now, hallelujah. There's three hallelujah. things I want you to see from this. First of all, it's God that gives you the creative ability, uh, ability Amen. to create wealth. Yes, hallelujah. And abundance. And secondly, I want you to remember. That, see, that word remember is in there. Remember that it's God. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so first, it's God. Now, our second point is remember it's God that yes, gives hallelujah. you the ability, the power to produce wealth. Okay, so what mm -hmm. is that ability? And I still have a third point I haven't mentioned yet. And, and the it, it's still about that power ability. And so what is that? Well, it might be ideas. It, it, it mm -hmm. might be uh, something to go and buy and, and sell, uh, a way to create a business, a way mm -hmm. to uh, advance your uh, career, all of these kinds of things. That's a part of the power to create wealth. Now, if you're just 
sitting, waiting on wealth to fall from the sky, mm -hmm. it may not happen. Uh, you know, you, you might sit under a cherry tree and wait for a cherry to fall on you, and otherwise you just wouldn't eat them. No, we've got to get up and do something. But there's a third point I want to make here. It's according to his divine purpose. Ooh, hallelujah. That's the third point in this. It's according to his divine purpose because he wants to do something. He mm. wants to establish his covenant. And that, uh, oh, in the hallelujah. King James, he talks about establishing the covenant. Here it's confirming the covenant. But that word establishing and confirming is fulfilling. Uh, his promises and fulfilling Hallelujah. his agreement with him, fulfilling amen, his contract amen, amen. because he wants you to partner with, with him. him. That's, amen, what amen. that's what he's talking about here. He, when you partner with him, mm -hmm. he is going to give you mm -hmm. wealth, mm -hmm. prosperity, and abundance. Amen. Well, amen. It's his that. will. His, his will for you. Hallelujah. Now, we're going to show you how to do it. We're going to show you how to do it. And we're going to show from the Bible two passages in 2 Kings. And I hope you make the notes tonight. In 2 Kings, the first one, we're going to show you how to open a supernatural gate of prosperity over your home. Hmm. A mm -hmm. supernatural gate of prosperity over your home. And uh, uh, secondly, we'll show you how to open a supernatural gate of prosperity over a city. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we're going to use mm, these two examples, mm, mm. but you could also open it over your uh, local congregation. You could open it over your neighborhood, over your region. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. So these are, this is what we're going to do. And then we're going to see a process here and it's all, uh, it's uh, partially symbolic and it's partially just uh, a, a biblical facts. Okay. But the two steps, we have to close the door to evil first. Mm -hmm. First step, close the door to evil. And let's Second, let this explain. Okay. okay. It, might, it might be sin in your mm -hmm. life. It mm -hmm. might be uh, anger. unforgiveness, anger. Uh, bitterness. Bitterness. All of these kinds of things. That's a door that needs to be closed before we can open doors. So you close doors to evil. Then you're able to open supernatural doors, doors to prosperity, wealth, mm -hmm. and abundance. Hallelujah. So we're going to look at a woman, a widow, in uh, 2 Kings 4. But let me give you a background on the story, because we're going, going through here quickly. Uh, and, and that is, uh, there was a a minister, a, a young prophet, I guess. Uh, he had two grown sons. He had a wife. And, and I guess he was living on credit, which is a terrible way to live. And uh, and, and so he died. And you think, well, if he's serving God, he's a prophet, uh, he ought to just keep on living and get all of his house, get his house in order. But he did. He died and did not have his or, house in order. Mm -hmm. He had so much debt, so much debt that the creditors were coming mm -hmm. to take his two sons. And lock them up. And they would be slaves then in, uh, for these other people. And so the widow comes to the prophet Elisha and uh, tells her the situation. And he's going to say something that will open a door, a supernatural door of prosperity over her home. And I'm going to uh, want us to go through this. But first of all, there's some doors that have to be closed. You know, if you're living on debt, that, that's a door that needs to be closed. Uh, we, we just can't live uh, in that and under that kind of bondage. We're not to owe anyone, but to love them. Okay, so close and the natural doors that have caused the problems, but then we'll talk about opening the supernatural realm. Okay, so the prophet is going to give a prophetic call to action. It's a prophetic word, but it's it includes something that the widow and her sons are going to need to do. So let's just read this short passage. Okay. Then Elisha said, Where, what? I'm in Second Kings 4, 3 through 7. Then Elisha the prophet said, go, borrow vessels from everywhere. Oh, I, there's one point I should have made, and I apologize for this. Uh, he asked her, what did she have? Mm -hmm. uh, and she said, well, I just have a little bit of oil. That's all I've got. Now, now that's a real important point mm -hmm. because Luke 16, 10 says, God will take what little you, well, what little you have, if mm -hmm. you're faithful. Mm -hmm. Those who are faithful, he'll take what little they have and 
increase it Amen. and multiply it. Amen. Oh, that's the promise right there. Amen. He'll Amen. take what little you have. If you're trustworthy, what you're trustworthy in, and he will multiply it. He'll increase it. Amen. And so Amen. here, uh, she ha he asked her, the prophet asked her what she has. I just have a little oil. Okay, okay. go ahead from there. Then. Okay. Go borrow the vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a little, just a few of them. And when you have come in, then you'll sh shut the door. Shut the door. Shut the door. Okay. Behind you and your sons and pour into those vessels and set aside the full ones. Okay. So she went from him and shut the door. Oh, do you hear that? I mean, this is an yeah. emphasis. I see it. It's just loud and clear. Amen. We need to shut the door on evil, whatever the evil is. Hallelujah. And that's only by the Holy Spirit. I'll show you the evil in your life, in your family, whatever needs to be shut. Shut that door mm -hmm. before you can start opening and doing what God wants. Okay, go ahead. Behind her and her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she began to pour out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her son, bring me one, another vessel. And he said, there are no more vessels. So the oil ceased. Okay, let's, then, just, pause, let's just pause right there for a minute, please. So the, it was their mindset. They, <laughs> this is all the vessels they gathered. You know, they could have kept going out. They that's could right. have kept going further and that's further. That's right. That's it, right. it was their mindset that limited yes. their prosperity. Yes. Did you but, hear that? Ooh, hallelujah. It That's was good. their mindset, the limitations in their mindset that limited their prosperity because they could have had more vessels and more oil. Okay. What were we going to say, Sherry? Okay. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said, bring me another vessel. The oil ceased. And then she came and told the man of God and said, and he said to her, Go and sell the oil and pay off your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is that not a strategic yes. mindset and a strategic strategy to keep her sons from going to prison, being in bondage, getting rid of their debt, having more than enough to live on? I believe that God gives us strategies to do that. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. Supernatural strategies. Supernatural kingdom, strategies. Kingdom, kingdom strategies. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. That we can live in abundance. The prophet didn't say, well, here, I've got that the money you need. I just got it in my pocket. I'll give it to you. Or we'll just pray, God, drop the money out of heaven. No, mm -hmm. he gave her a strategy a strategy that's going to take the little she has and multiply it. Hallelujah. He'll do the same amen, for you. Amen. Amen. He is no respecter of persons. He'll Hallelujah. Do the same for Hallelujah. You. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whatever you find that he has done, he'll do for you. Hallelujah. He, he prospered that widow, kept those boys, uh, out of slavery. He'll do the same for amen. you. Don't, amen. don't we want our children Free from free, bondage. Free. Our grandchildren free from bondage. Amen. I'm amen, showing you how amen, to do amen, it. Amen. Okay, so we've talked about opening a supernatural <laughs> door of prosperity or gate of prosperity over your house. You can do the same thing. It takes that prophetic word hallelujah. and act on what God is telling you. Oh, hallelujah. By his spirit. And shut whatever doors need to be shut and open. The supernatural door to prosperity and wealth. Amen. Now we're going to move to a city. How do you open a supernatural uh, gate of prosperity over a city? And we're going to see it in Second Kings seven. It's the same prophet. Second uh, Kings six. Oh, uh, it starts in six. I mean, the mm. story plays out in seven. But the first verse, and basically what we're going to see here again, it we shut some doors and we close some doors, and. Uh, let me give you the background on what's going on. There is a siege around the capital city of Samaria. The king is there, and the, there's a lot of people there, and there's no food because there's a big army. We, we now know it's the Syrian army. It's, it's uh, the army that came from Syria. The, at that time, they, they called them a little, something different than that, but that's basically who it was. It was the Syrians, and we know where the Syrians 
are. And so mm -hmm. uh, they were uh, besieging the city, the capital city, and uh, there was no food. So the people, some of the people had turned to cannibalism. Uh, they were eating, they were killing and eating people. It's just the worst conditions you could possibly imagine. And so Elisha is there and it's interesting. He's there with some elders. That tells me there's some people there with authority. And uh, he's going to, uh, first of all, shut some doors. And we're going to talk about those. That's in 2 Kings 6. And then we're going to see how he opens a supernatural uh, gate of prosperity over a city. A city under siege. Mm -hmm. A city where there is no food. Let's just, this is Amen. such an interesting Amen. story. All right, Sherry. Read first the passage in uh, chapter 6 that shows they're shutting doors over a city. Mm. This is for a city we're talking about tonight. Now Elisha was sitting in his house and the elders were sitting with him and the king sent a man from his presence but before the messenger came to him he said to the elders do you see how this son of a murderer has sent a man to cut off my head? Look when the messenger comes shut the door and hold the door shut against him. Press him out. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. I, I Some do. of you need to do that. Uh, this Praise is, the name of this Jesus. This is symbolic here. Uh, he, he spoke uh, not to some children to close the door and not just to mm -hmm. some lukewarm uh, Christians to close the door mm -hmm. uh, to evil, but he's talking to elders. These are people oh, with hallelujah. authority. In the city. Hallelujah. So some of Hallelujah. You have authority, authority in, in your, your city, city. You need to be closing the doors mm -hmm. of evil. See, the king, he called him a son of a murderer, and he had murder in his heart, and he'd sent a man to murder the prophet. Yeah, to cut why, off his head. Why, 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 why would they want to cut off the head of the prophet? What did the prophet do? Well, they want to stop the prophetic voice. Yes. Woo! That's what, Amen. That's what they're trying to do today. They're Hallelujah. trying to stop the prophetic voice. And so the first thing they did was shut the door on the evil. Don't let it come in there. Don't let it stop the prophetic voice. The prophetic voice needs to come forth. The Hallelujah. prophetic voice is needed in closing uh, the gates, the natural gates to evil and, uh, and uh, sin, but open supernatural gates to prosperity over homes, over local congregations, over uh, mm -hmm. over this group tonight and over Amen. Uh, over cities. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The prophetic voice Hallelujah. needs to go forth. That's, the, that's what God wants to show here in this passage. And now we're going to look at this process of opening up. So we've closed the door. Now we're going to change, uh, move on over to 2 Kings 7 and, and we're going to give the prophetic word that opens a supernatural gate of prosperity. All right, let's hear this. Then Elisha said, Listen to the word of the Lord. What, what verse is this? This is 2 Kings 7. That's all verse God. One. It's verse 1. Well, verse 1. This is what the Lord says. About this time tomorrow, a measure of fine flour will be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Hallelujah. Well, what he's saying here is this is a prophetic word. And... There's no food in the city. There's no food, and there's an army, a, mm -hmm. a mighty army outside of the city. And yet the prophet is going to give a prophetic word that tomorrow, at this time, uh, food is going to be abundant, and it's going to be so abundant that the prices will be low. Woo! Hallelujah. That's a prophetic word. This is the word, mm -hmm. the prophetic word that's going to open up the supernatural. Hallelujah. Thanks. Of mm -hmm. prosperity. Praise the name okay, of Okay, so let's go down and see what it sounds like when there's a supernatural gate of prosperity. Open. Yeah. Okay. Hallelujah. This is the next passage. Next to set of verses. Yes. What verses are they? Uh, verses starting with verse five. Okay. So the there were four lepers, and they were out. They were outside the city. Got up at twilight to go into the camp of the Armenians. When they came to the outskirts of the camp, behold, there was no one there. For the Lord, listen to this, the Lord had made the army of the Armenians hear a sound. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
What kind of sound was that? I believe it was the sound of the Lord. Mighty rushing wind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord had made the army hear a sound of chariots, a sound of horses, a sound of a great army. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then what happened? And they said one to another, Behold, the king of Israel has hired the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come and attack us. <laughs> so they got up and they fled at twilight and abandoned their tent. They left everything. They left their tents. They left their jewelry. They left their food. They left their horses. They left their little donkeys. Indeed, the camp itself, there was nothing there. And they fled for their lives. Okay. Hallelujah. So this is what the gate of prosperity looked like. This, it sounds like, mm -mm. it sounds like an army. Woo! Horses and chariots, what is angels? angels Hallelujah, horses, hallelujah. Coming down and, and see there were four lepers outside of uh, Samaria because they didn't want them in there. And, uh, but yet they're starving too. And so they decided, well, if we go into the city, we're going to die. Mm -hmm. If we go out there, we might die. They may kill us when mm -hmm. we go out to mm -hmm. see this uh, army that's besieging the city. But maybe they won't. We don't know. So it wasn't their faith. It was, what was happening, <laughs> so, was the prophetic <laughs> word, word of mm. the prophet. Mm. And so they got up and they started walking out there. And, and about that time, there so there was some movement. There was some action. Uh, those four lepers got up, went out there to the camp, and they found it full of food, gold and, and silver. silver and raiment and mm -hmm. all of that stuff. And so they were just eating and having a good old time. And then they said, oh, we need to share our good fortune. I, I hope that touches you when you have good fortune that, <laughs> that you oh, share. we need to share, <laughs> we need to give some of this, somebody. God is just uh, blessing hallelujah, us, hallelujah, so we hallelujah. need to be giving some out to some other people. Amen. And so, okay, so what we saw, they closed the, uh, the gate, uh, wouldn't let the, servant of the evil king come and cut off the head of the prophet. The word of the prophet came. That's what opened up the supernatural gate of prosperity over the city. And uh, that it sounded like an army, an mm -hmm. army of angels and chariots. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. And now this is the last passage and this is, it's going to be the fulfillment of the prophetic word. Mm -hmm. Let's see if it happened. Okay. In verse 16. So the people went out and plundered the camp of the Armenians. Then a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in accordance to the word of the Lord. So as the prophetic Hallelujah. word happened exactly like the prophet said it was Amen. going to happen. Amen. That the next day at this time, food prices were, food was going to be abundant. Food prices were going to be low. This is the way to open gates. Hope I hope I have Presenting yeah, this in a way yeah. that you understand you have the authority and power Amen. to open Thank gates, you, open gates of prosperity over yourself, over your family, your home, over your city, over your congr church congregation, Amen. over your neighborhood. Amen. Get with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> God's not going to drop money out of the sky. Hallelujah. But Hallelujah. He wants you to prosper. Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, I turn Jesus. it over to Sherry. She you know, we uh, we talk about that connection between uh, faith and power because it takes both of them. And faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And as we take hold of that word, and, and if this is an area that that you need to, to have abundance in your life, you need uh, finances to increase, you need... Uh, whatever it is, provision, uh, then uh, possibly, you know, a new job. Uh, some of you are considering retirement uh, and and that's another uh, area where you need uh, a strategy uh, so that you can provide uh, what is needed. And, um, and so if that's the case, then, you know, get into the word and ask the Lord, show me uh, what I need to be speaking out of my mouth and what do I need to create create 
the the prosperity that I need. Prosperity is is over so many different areas. You know, we we prosper. Uh, it says even as your soul prospers, so that you know that you don't have to go through depression. You don't have to go through anxiety. You don't have to go through panic attacks. You don't have to go through uh, lack or poverty or thinking that you are you are not worthy of of what the Lord has for you. And so, you know, that's the Lord wants your soul to prosper. Uh, he wants your body to prosper so that we eat the right things and, and do the right things for our body. And uh, and so it's a very large area that we're talking about here. But let's go back to two things, and that is shutting the doors to those things that are not of the Lord and opening up those those doors that will lead to um, prospering. And so bef before we start our comments, I'm going to release right now prosperity over this group in the name of Jesus and that the doors of unforgiveness are closed right now. The doors of, of bitterness are closed right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, the doors of anger uh, is are closed in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, for closing every evil door that the enemy has tried to open in any of our lives. We ask you to close those doors right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. The name of Jesus. And if there needs to be any repentance, then go ahead and repent right now. Hallelujah. I've been repenting all day long. Hallelujah. And in the name of Jesus right now, I release and open up the doors of prosperity to you. Doors that will lead to an increase in your income, in your finances, in your uh, provision, uh, in the name of Jesus. And I speak abundance to you. Hallelujah. Abundance. Jesus says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And I stop that right now in the name of Jesus. He has stolen from you your joy. He has stolen from you uh, what you have uh, uh, received uh, in the past. Uh, you've received uh, um, the glory of God and the enemy has tried to come in and steal uh, God's glory from you in Jesus name. Also, he has tried to steal your anointing. Oh, hallelujah. I stop it right now. In the name of Jesus, I say that the enemy will not come through that door any longer in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Abundance come. Jesus said, I've come. Jesus is here. Hallelujah. Receive it right now. Amen. Oh, praise Amen. God. If you need a new job, a better job, receive it right now Hallelujah. in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. For the great army is here. The great army of God is in this Zoom meeting right now in Jesus' name. I hear the horses. I hear the chariots. I hear the enemy fleeing. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord.